We're going to be um, finishing up this dresser. It's a long seven drawer dresser. I'm going to finish it up as much as I possibly can. Um, I still have to do a little bit of black around the very base of it and then that's about it. But tonight I want to show you how the hammered metal paint, hi there, turned out on the handles. Um, I want to show you um, how beautiful this turned out. Take a look. This is gorgeous. I love this color. We're going to do some antiquing and you were using black wax, which a lot of people are really afraid of. I've done a little tiny bit of stenciling on the door, just with the faintest, lightest gray, just to give it a little bit of a decoration there, kind of spruce it up a little bit. Um, and we will talk about just waxing and getting details uh, to look more specific. But, um, so. I think we can get most of this done. It shouldn't take too terribly long. What I'm going to use tonight is um, clear wax. This is the clear wax. Uh, no, this is the clear wax I have, and then we're using black wax. These are the Bear brand from Home Depot. I really like these. Um, there's another clear wax called Verithane finishing wax, which is just a clear wax that I use sometimes. It has a little bit more of an odor to it. Um, it's almost gone as you can see, but it, this one has a little bit of a yellow tint to it, whereas, I'll show you this other one, it's, uh, that's the black. This other one is really, really clear, it's like lard. So I like this one for working on pieces. And then, um, so I think we'll put this one away because we won't use that one tonight. So we'll use clear and we'll use the black. I did get the top of the dresser done. It's got a nice coat of black on it. I had to do another coat today, so I won't be able to poly it tonight. But um, I will maybe do a short video on that. I'm not sure tomorrow. I just want to let it dry at least one more night overnight. Um, okay, now I've got my drill for putting on the hardware. I've got a couple of little... Um, little artist brushes for doing some detail of the wax and I have a wax brush for the white wax this is a round wax brush this is just a coarse brush for wax and then I have another white brush if I want and somewhere up here is a black I use different brushes for different colors so these are my this is my big fat white one this is my slim white one um, this is about a one and a half inch oval and this is my dark wax one. So I have a black wax one and an antique wax one. So I use different brushes for different things. Um, the stencil I used was this one. And I just put the stencil twice, or actually three times, right at the bottom um, here. So it's just very, very, very faint. You could probably see it a little bit better over there. So we're going to uh, black wax these drawers and get a little bit of shadow. You can see over here where I've done some black waxing today. It just looks like dark gray. And then the inside portion is the um, goddess ashwagandha color that we did. So I'll show you how to do that. We're going to make it a little bit more detailed than that, actually. And then we're going to put some of the hardware on and see how it looks. Um, one of the things I talked about yesterday was well, was um, the inside of this cabinet. So this is cedar inside, and I did paint um, down the bottom. I did paint right into here. So when I take that tape off, it'll be a nice white ledge in there. But what I want to do is I want to clean up. I did wash down this cedar a little bit today. Um, so it has a really nice uh, clean surface. But what I want to do is I've got some wipe on poly. I was going to use shellac. But then I found a tin of poly in my cupboard that had almost nothing in it. So I think what I'm going to do is just fold up my cloth. And we are going to go in this cupboard. <laughs> My old knees can hack it. So when I do this type of thing, I just dip my cloth in the shellac and just make sure you don't drip it all over. So now it's gonna bring up the color 
but it's also going to dry exactly like this. So it just looks like really nice new wood. So I'm going to go back into the corner and across the back. If you keep your cloth in a square, it's really easy to get into the corners. So I'm going to put a little bit more on my rag and go back in again. So this is wipe on poly and it will dry exactly like you see it now. And it will also not leave a residue like if you used if you use something like hemp oil in here, um, the hemp oil looks really great, but it's an oil. So I really would prefer not to have anybody putting their clothes on an oily surface, even a bit of oil. So I'm going to take this tape off, and that's where we've done that little bit of a, that looks nice and clean, nice and tight. It has no dust down here, so I'm going to use a little bit more. This probably is only used about half a cup. You can see how pretty that is. And if you get it onto the white paint, it doesn't matter, it's pretty clear. And this is the clear satin, um, white blonde poly that I'm using right now. Probably have too much here actually. But it just gives it a really nice, clean, fresh look inside. And you can actually do this um, to the insides of drawers if you wanted to do your drawers as well. I'm just going to clean this off the edge and that is it. So I think that looks really nice. Now I'm going to back up and put my, I didn't use very much as you can see, hardly any, maybe, um, half a cup, not even half a cup of it. So hopefully you can see all the way to the bottom. I'm just going to move this one down a tiny bit more. Like so because I want you to get the whole the whole picture in there. Okay. So, this is the fun stuff, you guys. This is the fun where you get to play with your colors, make it a little bit more antique. -y. With the stencil, one thing I wanted to tell you was if you can get these little tiny there's paintbrush kits at uh, craft stores, and they usually have these really, this is like a half inch brush. Um, all I do is I, I get the paint on, I rub it off on the edge of the tin, and then I just very gently dab, and I use it just like that. Just dab, just like this. Just very, very gently, if you put a tiny, tiny bit on, um, it's not going to leave a weird mark or anything. If you did have overage, spray it with water and wipe it off right away if you don't like it. So say I did this in black, this stencil, and I didn't like it immediately, I could just spray it right away and wash it off and then start over. So you don't have to be afraid of stenciling. It's actually pretty simple to do. I'm really hoping this little stool holds me up. Okay, so we're going to go in here. And I think I'm going to use these two um, rounds here. I've got my black wax and I've got my clear wax. So what you do is you start with your clear wax because um, clear wax leaves a little bit of room, a little bit of buffer room for the area that you're putting dark wax on. If you put just dark wax on fresh paint, it tends to get right deep into the pores of the paint and then it can be really killer to try and get it off with a cloth or something. So I just go around where I want, where I know I'm going to wax, I go around and I just really put it on quite thick. Now this door, um, I don't have to wax because fusion mineral paint you don't have to wax after. It's not a chalk paint that you have to wax after. Hi, Dina. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do since I'm here is I'm going to wax the whole door just in clear. This handle's still loose. I have to get a better screw. And that way it's perfectly sealed anyway. No more fussing to do with it. And it just brings up the color of that. This has got a sashwagandha here. Okay, so a little bit more wax in these bits and up in here. And I have to go down this side. Just 
just in there and along the bottom. So now the fun starts, you guys. Watch this. All right, that looks scary, doesn't it? It's pretty cool though. You just, once the clear is on, underneath it, you do not have to be afraid of doing this. So if you let wax sit, uh, like dark wax, if you let it sit for quite a while, it's going to really stick onto your piece. You really need to put it on and then wipe it off fairly immediately. Like um, this one over here, I've, I've done a couple of times, um, but the goal is to just put it on, get it in where you want it. So I'm just smearing this inside here because I want some at the very back. I don't care if every bit of white is covered up. Doesn't really matter to me if there's a bit of white. In fact, I kind of like it. But I do want in here. Okay, so that looks really awful, I know. However, if we take, you can use um, shop towels. These shop towels are really great for, for wax. So what I do is I take the majority of it back off with the paper. And the reason it's coming off so nicely is because I have clear wax underneath it. If I didn't have the clear wax underneath first, it would be really hard to get this out. So you can see right there, that's pretty cool, isn't it? And then wherever I want it to look really antique -y, I just leave it. So I'm gonna go in here and wipe this. And it really picks up any um, imperfections in the wood, any, this part here is actually a resin mold and it's really picking up the imperfections in the resin mold as well. So that's kind of neat. And you just keep pulling it off. So I like that it's really dark in some of these spots here. You get your finger in there and you just mash it around. <laughs> that's about the best way I can describe it. Okay, so what do we do with this? Same thing. We just fold our cloth and we pull it off. Now I'll show you a little trick. Okay, I don't like all of this in here. So one thing to remember is wax removes wax. So if I was to go like this, where I want it to come off, and say right there where I want it to come off, and then I wipe with my cloth. You see there, it's come pretty much off. Here I need to take it off a little bit more. And the reason I'm doing that right now is I want a little bit in here, but I want to be able to go back and I want to create my own shadow inside here. So the goal is to have most of this, the original color, and then a border of shadow. So we're going to go back down over this, and I'm pretty sure I waxed it. And we'll take our black wax and we're gonna go right down. And I'm even gonna go in here this time. So I'm starting to put a little bit of my shadow in. So when you use uh, black wax, it will darken up your paint a bit. So you just have to decide where you want the um, wax to be and where you want your shading and shadow to be. You can even see here that I have much darker, um, a little bit darker wax in here than I do here. So I'll go back and I want it to look like this. So I'll go back in here and I'll add a little bit more so that I can get it looking like that. So I must have really mushed it in there because it's pretty thick. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a second. And I'm going to take, you'll use a fair bit of shot cloth, just keep grabbing one and throwing them out. <laughs> the only thing you can do. So I'm going to go in here. You don't have to wear gloves to do this. You can if you want, but. So I really want to get into these grooves a little bit better. So I'm going to go right sideways into them. See if I can pull out some of that. So 
So I want to take the wax off the top is all I'm doing. And then what it does is it leaves the rest sitting inside these grooves. If I wanted that a little bit lighter on top, I take my clear wax and put it on and wipe off even more. You can see how much brighter that is all of a sudden. So what I want here is this, so it's dark in between and light around there. So I kind of like this um, bit here. I might just blend this in a little bit. And you can go in circles if you want to pull it out into this area a little bit. So what I do is I do a first round and then I stand back and I look at it and I see where do I want it accented more? Where do I want it lighter? Um, do I like that? Do I need to take that bit off? Or do I like, to, would I like to leave it? and to get your overall effect. So with this one, I want it to look kind of um, antique, like maybe you'd find it in uh, an Italian villa or something, even though it's kind of more modern than that, but um, something like that. So that gave me a little bit more in there, which I kind of like. So I'm not being really fussy getting it off perfectly. The goal is to get it on, but not have it so perfect. Okay, so let's go to this side a little bit. And I'm just going to put, now I'm, I'm going to do this column. And I'm going to do right in here as well and a little bit down here. So I'm going to put the black on. I really actually like this bare wax. It's a beautiful um, consistency and it's about $18 for this tin, but it's a huge tin and it really goes on nicely. It's gorgeous stuff. It's not heavy or sticky. Um, I do use Fusion Mineral Paints wax, but I find um, it's not always easy to get a hold of um, and also it's a little bit more pricey and I think this is actually a little bit more buttery so I've kind of switched to this one okay that's my outline of my what I want to keep so let's try this mm -hmm. Some of it off. I hope everybody's staying warm. It's so cold here today. A huge storm came up this afternoon and froze me. It's raining, pouring, wind blowing. Something else. Okay, let's go down here. I want, I think that's pretty good for the dark in there. I want to take a little bit of the dark off the very top so I am going to add clear wax and I'm going to wipe with my cloth so I switch between shop cloths and cloths I use this for my polishing rag and I use the other one here for getting the worst of it off because otherwise my polishing rag would be so I'm going to dip this rag in the clear and I'll show you why I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to make my border and try to blend this in a little bit. So if I really don't like this, I can remove it with clear wax. Um, another thing that removes mineral wax, but why would I want to do that when I can just put clear wax on it right now? I'm going to use my cloth and buff that. Oh, I think that looks pretty cool. Now this side is messy. So let's do that again. So the cloth just allows me to keep like a, a very specific border with it. It's a little bit heavy in there, so I'll take that out. And I've got wax on this cloth, just um, clear wax. So that's why I'm smearing it around. And you do have to, I will say, unless you're a real expert at this, which I'm not, 
you do have to um, wax, remove, wax, remove, wax, remove. That's pretty much how it goes. Okay, so let's stand back. And so that is that door, and then there's that door. So that's the difference between what wax will do. Um, and I think that looks pretty good, especially with that side now. If you can see this, this already has some wax on it. And then this doesn't. So even though this is really pretty, I think it's just too boring. So I would actually change it. Hi, Lorraine Marie. We need to do this to something for you soon. Okay, so let's tackle this one. I'm going to move you in over here and move my waxes over. So far, my little rolly stool I'm sitting on down here hasn't kicked me off. One time I was doing a, a live and I went flying, <laughs> literally. <laughs> if it hits something with these rolly wheels that it doesn't like, it sends you flying. Okay, can we see that? Uh, let's see. I like to get you nice and close so you can actually see what I see. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start up here again with clear wax on my, uh, this is like a two inch round. These brushes um, are a Bennett brand and I get them at either Rona or Home Depot and they're literally like six bucks and I absolutely love them for wax. So if you're doing any wax detailing on any pieces, go get yourself about four of them. One for white, one for clear, one for black, and one for antiquing wax, which is dark brown. And then you always have them. And don't mix your uh, waxes up because you don't want to contaminate white with dark or your clear with um, a dark one. Okay, so let's start there. We'll do this and this and up here. And it doesn't have to be a ton of wax. You just, it's so creamy. This stuff, this Bear brand is so creamy. It's like a can of lard. It's just absolutely beautiful stuff. It's almost like you want to put it on your face for a night cream or something. I don't know. Okay, so let's go at it. And I know this looks, yikes like a little bit too much but my door keeps rattling but it's really cool I love the look so we're not going to leave it like this obviously but we're going to now as I'm doing this I'm getting little bits on the side here and in here that are kind of messy but what I can do after is take either mineral spirits or clear wax and just go wipe those off so I'm not worried about getting up here, for instance, like I just did. I can take and wipe it off. It's not rocket science, but it is a little bit unnerving the first time you use black wax, I have to say. I have some other black wax that I bought, I think. I can't remember the brand, but I got it at Michael's. And, ugh, it is awful. It's a really really runny soupy wax it's called liquid wax <laughs> and i'll tell you what it's liquid all right it's just like runny goop you can't control it nothing okay can you see down to the bottom here what i'm doing okay all right so let's start wiping this off you can see it picking up all these little spots in that the resin uh, mold that's on this. So this 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 dresser is a dresser that is probably from I'm guessing the 80s, and it's one of these ones with the fake. Um, it's got fake wood carving on it, so it's actually just a plastic resin mold. And then the top of this dresser is laminate. So the point of doing this piece was to show you that even if you have a piece like this, they're still worth um, upcycling because they can be beautiful when they're done. I mean, really pretty. I really like this one. Um, if I was doing this for myself or for someone that wanted it, I'd probably add some silver to the handles 
But these handles I just spray painted in uh, hammered metal black. Um, and the big handles I'll show you in a bit are just gorgeous. So they are, you know, you can make it as luxurious or as plain as you want. This one I'm selling, so I don't want it to be too luxurious because then I narrow my market for resale. So, but if it was somebody's um, that owned it, and brought it to me and said, I kind of want this look, then I, I would do that. Okay, so let's clean this up a bit. I don't like all this. And that's a bit of overage with the wax that I do on purpose. So wax, clear wax removes dark wax. So let's go in here. And I'm going to wipe that out. See how easily that comes out? And then I'll do a little bit more here, down here. Now I'm going to wipe my brush on my apron because it's getting a little bit too much dark wax in with my clear. So um, let's take more of this off. I get these aprons at the... Uh, thrift store. They're the kind that the long over your neck chef's aprons <laughs> and I love them because boy do I ever get a lot of paint on myself. Okay so I just took off the bits I don't like and we're going to go down here. I think I put clear wax but just in case. And we're going to take the dark wax and go All the way down into this crack here. That's pretty dark, isn't it? <laughs> um, this door is very rattly, I have to say. Okay. So I'm going to use, this is how bad it gets, so you just keep using them, get a lot of shop towels, you can use paper towel or rags, um, I use the shop towel for getting the worst of it off, and then I use my t-shirt rag to buff it, because the t-shirt rags seem to be the best, um, I've tried a whole bunch of different types of cloth, and I always go back to the, to the t-shirt one. Okay, so we'll do this one. You just basically mat it on and then remove what you want. That's really rattly, driving me crazy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this one is a bit darker, so I'm going to put a little bit of um, clear wax on and take just the wax on the very top of the surface off. And that just brightens that right up. And I might do some up here too because it's a little bit dark. So again, what I will do is go back and decide where I don't want so much wax and take some off with this clear one. Right now I think that's not too bad. So I'm going to finish this in here and this is um, a little bit of clear just to get some of this overage off and I'm going to take a clean rag. And then I'm going to take my buffing rag and buff it. Now, I did say I was going to wax this door, which Fusion Mineral Paint, again, does not need waxing. So, um, but I'm going to wax it anyway, just because I have all this other wax here. Might as well. So I'm going to buff all this out now. And 
and then I'll stand back in a bit and, and I'll assess the situation and see if there's any parts that are too heavy, any parts that are too light. Um, so that's the two doors so far. And there's one door. I think they're pretty evenly done. How do you guys like my socks? It's cold out here, so I had to put warm socks on. <laughs> um, okay, so that's one door, that's the other door, and that end has already been done. So I'm going to go up to here, and I'm going to get a straight shot if I can. Of, is that it? Yeah. I'm going to go, and I'm not even going to put clear wax on here because I want it to be nice and dark. And I don't care if I get it on the paint either, up top there. So this is just going to add a little bit of shading to um, this top rail here. It's not going to be super dark, but it will be a little bit gray. And what I wanted it to do was get black into that. You can see where it made a black line in the cracks, and that's what I wanted. So now I, I find that there's too much gray on the top. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of wax right on my rag so I can control exactly where I put it so it's right on my rag. And I'm gonna go across the top and lighten it up. And that will leave the wax deep in the groove, but it'll take it off right where I want it on these rails and make it a little bit lighter. Okay, now I've already done this other end, so that part's done. Get that over there, tighten up a little bit. Okay, hmm. let's go over. I think I'm going to move this table around a bit and back everything up. And we'll do these doors here. So there's a bit of wax. It always sticks in the little tiny um, blemishes in the wood, which is really kind of neat. Just buff that out a little bit. Okay, so doors. Um, so the doors go the same way, but what you want to kind of do is you want to do the frame, but you also want to do the inside, and you want to have like a shadow effect. Um, so if you look over there, it's not perfect yet, so I have to clean that up, but it has a bit of a shadow effect. And then there's this, which also has a shadow effect. And then here, and that just makes it look really um, aged and antique looking instead of brand new looking. <laughs> um, I was looking on Wayfair today, a dresser, seven drawer dresser similar to this was a thousand fifty nine dollars so trust me if you have an old dresser like this you don't want to be hacking it out thinking it's not in style and you can really make these look pretty cool so I'm gonna go down this whole frame and do my clear wax so the clear wax again goes beneath the dark wax so that you can wipe the dark wax off easily because if you get dark wax onto paint that doesn't have any clear wax beneath it, the dark wax gets sucked right into the paint um, and it's really hard to get off. So you just want to put a little very fine clear coat on. Okay, let's go here. And then we'll put some up here. I can clean any of this other overage out after. I don't have to be fussing if I get some in here. I'm not worried about it. It's just wax, so clear wax will remove it or um, mineral spirits will remove it. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, the thing is with these waxes too is that if you leave these like that and walk away, 
they dry rock hard in about three days. So that's why we can use these waxes for decorative effect and know that once we've got them complete, once we've got the piece complete, it's gonna, the waxes are gonna stay exactly where we put them because they have a drying time and they go really, really hard. Um, and they're made for furniture painting, so they're pretty neat. There's lots of different brands out there. This one is the Bear brand, B-E-H-R from uh, Home Depot and it's, I like it. It's a nice, nice buttery wax. I'm taking this off for now. What I wanted to do here first is just get a, a basic idea of, you know, the first layer of wax there pretty much. Okay, I'm going to open this, if I can get over here, get something to open this, or not. Okay, and I'm going to go up top for a minute, and wipe this off. So my goal is to have it leave some of these weird wax bits in the grooves. That's where you want the wax to end up is in these grooves. And that just gives it the aged, really aged look. I'm going to do something in a few minutes to detail that even more. Okay, so I don't want this to stay like that. So I'm going to remove some of it with clear wax. You can't see the clear wax, but it is there. It is there. I'm going to take my cloth and take it off for the most part. That'll get most of it off for me. And then I'm going to buff the rest so there's no streaks. Okay, so we're going to go down, and we're going to go down to... Now I'm going to put it where I want it on this bit here. And then we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to do the bottom. Okay. So I'm just going to take a little bit, put it more or less where I want it in kind of a straight line. Just be really careful and not be too smudgy. Make my frame of where I want my shadow to end up and how wide I want it to be. If I want it to be a lot wider, I'll make it a lot wider right now. It's a little bit easier to do now. Okay, so I think that's about equal to the other one. So that looks really heavy, right? And I would never leave it like that. I'm going to do the bottom one here. Um, so we're going to take this off. Another shop cloth. And we're going to go down and cross. Dina, if your sister isn't watching yet, you have to get her watching because she was interested in learning some of this stuff. At least that's what I heard. Okay, so there's my line. Now I can leave it like that, but that's kind of sloppy as well. So I don't want to leave it like that. Hi there. So what I'm going to do is take my clear wax again, put a little bit on my brush, and just put a little tiny bit all the way down here. Take my rag, and I want just a haze, just a hint of this gray wax to be a shadow. And that's pretty much how I want it. A little bit less down here. And then we'll go across the bottom and take at least half of this off. It's just too heavy and too dark and it looks silly. So that now is starting to blend. Okay, and then we'll go up here. And take some of this off. And then we'll go over here. And do the same. 
You just keep doing the same thing over and over, basically. Um, I put it on. I remove most of what I want to take off, and then I will add a little bit more and take off some and add a little bit more until I finally get to where I really, really want it. So right down here, I think there's too much still. Let me put some on my cloth and take it off. Okay, so now I've got it pretty much where I want it. There's a blob here I don't like. And I'm going to buff that in. And there's a line here that I don't like. So I'm going to take that out. So clear wax removes dark wax. Clear wax will remove any wax, actually. And like I said, this wax does dry hard in about three days. So whatever effect you have on your piece is going to stay there for a very long time to whoever owns it. This is just clear wax. Um, fusion paint doesn't need to be waxed, but I thought since I'm here, I'm going to give it a little sheen, a little bit of sheen to the front. Okay, so... Um, in here, it's a little dark. Let me take a little bit of this out. See if I can get some of that out. And um, on this side. And then I've got a little bit on the bottom here that I need to finish. So I'm going to go in here. And I didn't clear wax it because I want this part to be dark anyway. So I don't care if it really gets sticky on the bottom. The wax doesn't get sticky. It's just if, it, if there's no clear wax base beneath it, it gets, um, it just goes right into the wood grain and right into your paint. So if you want it to go right into your paint like I just did there, then then you're fine to just put it straight onto paint, but um, uh, I didn't want it. I wanted to do that there, but not up here. So there's a bit of muck in here. So I'm just going to take my, my cloth and some wax on my finger and just remove it. So if you really wanted to clean up any little bits of details, that's what you do. And you want to do that before your three-day sort of window is up. I found even if I don't take wax off by the next day, it's kind of a little bit tricky to get off. But it does come off at least. Okay, so let's go over here. See if my little rolly chair holds on to me or kicks me off. Um... <clears throat> I think that's about fairly even in here. And that side looks good and that side. So see right now I can see that I have more dark wax over here. So I'm gonna go take some of that off. So let's roll over, get my waxes over there. Okay, so let's take some of this heavy dark off. I did this this afternoon, so it's probably been drying about three hours. So let's see if it's going to come off. Mm, a little bit. Um, At least it's lightening it up enough to blend it out a bit better. So that's good because I don't want it to look obvious. You don't want your wax to look like it's an obvious. You want it, you always want wax, and I always say this you want your wax to look like dirt, like old dirt that's been sitting on your piece for 100 years in some villa somewhere, just looking like. Nobody's dusted it or taken care of it, and maybe it's sat under a under a sheet for a hundred years, kind of thing. Mm. 
Okay, I'm just going to put a bit more up here because I don't find it very dark and I don't know why. Maybe I didn't do that bit before. Um, I'm trying to even out the left and right sides here of the piece. See, I like, I like this. I like how it just did that at the bottom there with that nice ridge of black wax. I really like that. I'm going to show you something else that can make your wax, um, your waxing a little bit neater, even. I'm going to try and get that same black ridge down here, although there is another way to do it. Oh, there we go. That might work. Put that in there. Put some more in there. It's funny, you know, you can do these pieces and think, ugh, they look terrible, and then <clears throat> they're all finished, and they turn out really nice, and you really love them, and you think, well, what is everybody else going to think? Like, someone who wants to buy it, maybe, and they come along, and they're just like, oh my goodness, that is the most beautiful thing. <laughs> so, you just never really know what people are going to do. But, okay. I'm just tidying up this little bit up here and over here. I don't want any pieces of wax sticking out funny. Okay, so I'm going to show you something really neat now. I'm going to put my wax brushes up. Um, I, I heard one of the girls one day calling this putting on mascara. <laughs> so I thought it was kind of a, a neat term. Um, let's see if we can do it. Put on our wax mascara. Okay, so this this part here doesn't really need it, but I'm gonna give it a whirl because I can. <laughs> I'm just gonna see what happens and see if this technique works. Because I thought it was pretty cool when I saw her do it. So this just goes in and really defines your your bits. So wherever it missed. Let's see. Oh yeah. That's a little bit more wax. I guess is all it does. But if you do want a, a, a part to be a little bit more distinguished, it definitely helps. That's for sure. So you can even go up into your crevices and blend out a little bit if you want more shading on the top. I think a little bit more in here would be nice. And in here. So these little fine brushes are good for, you know, the really intricate bits that might have gotten missed with the, the big uh, wax application. I guess you could go all, all the way down each one of those, but I'm not going to bother to do that. Seems like a lot of work. Uh, where are we here? Can you see? Yeah. And I'm going to put a little bit more on here. Uh, I think that's about right. You could go in here and add a little bit more shading to here, I suppose. Um, and just gently wipe a little bit off there. Okay, now down at the bottom here, I'm going to do this. So it gets a nice dark line in there. And there's no obvious white or gray or whatever color this is sticking out. We want it to look really deep into those cracks. Okay, moving right along to the next one. It's going to look pretty neat. We're going to put the hardware on in a minute. Um, and then all I have to do is I have to paint the very bottom uh, skirt of this black. Right now I've got wood fill on it. And I will be sanding that out tomorrow and painting it black at the bottom so it matches the top. 
and then we'll get it staged for pictures and it's gonna look really pretty so this piece you could sell I I think to a guy or a gal um, I think it would be an either or some pieces are really dainty that we do and some are not so but this one is is kind of either or so I like that idea of it okay so let's go down oh, to the bottom here <clears throat> you're supposed to think of this as the eyeliner <laughs> that's how I heard it and just give it a little weight and it puts the puts the wax right into the crease here <clears throat> so you can see that what I'm doing right now hopefully you can see when I put the wax right into this crease here, you can see how it's really making it uh, highlight that bottom bit there. It's kind of neat. So take your little artist brush and wherever you want to add extra details <clears throat> to give it some extra kick, you can do that. So what do you do with this, right? Um, you do the exact same thing. You go in here. And all this does is just gives it a little bit of an extra definition. You don't have to do this at all. But I like to, um, I like to get it as highlighted as I can, all the little features. And then just gently wipe it back and it leaves just this little ridge of uh, what they call eyeliner. <laughs> um, I think that's a pretty good term. I wish I could do my own eyeliner this well though. I always have trouble with my eyeliner because when you get to be my age you have to have cataract surgery and then your cataracts leave you half blind after anyway and then you can't see your eyeliner <laughs> so I can see this though. Mm. Okay. Alrighty, now if I wanted to, I could even do this one, but I think, I don't know, I think I'll just not do that, that bit. I might, I might look at it tomorrow and change my mind, but for now, I just think it looks pretty tidy. When I let this dry and I come back tomorrow and look at it, like here, I, I think there's a bit of a blob there that I need to smooth out in here too. So that's just, you know, going back and looking at it. Um, I'll do the sides. I'll wax the sides. And there's a little something out here that should be smoothed out. Oh, here's the place that should have this eyeliner. Right in here. You see that? Right in there. That just really gives that definition there. So let's go over here. Got my little stool. I'm still on it. <laughs> this little stool loves to throw me. If you hit one tiny little thing, it just kicks you right off and throws you for a loop. But I have to use it sometimes because right now I'm on the floor. Okay, so that really adds some definition to to this. Um, so watch. There's nothing here, and if I go like that, isn't that nice? Just really gives it some punch, really. And it kind of fills in that really light white um, area, and then just wipe it off where you don't want it. That looks really cool. I like it. I like it. A little bit more here. And a little bit more here. And that is that. <clears throat> I'll do this really quick and then we'll do the handles because I think the handles always are kind of like the jewelry for your piece. <laughs> and they should look really pretty. And I have sprayed them in hammered metal, which is a Rust-Oleum, I believe. Yeah, Rust-Oleum paint. Um, the hammered metal and it's got a really dimply sort of blacksmith sort of look to it like I said it looks like it's just come out of the foundry or <clears throat> just come out of being uh, 
forged or something, you know. So I really like it, and I'll show you what it looks like done. So I did two coats of hammered metal, and whoop. It's a really, really pretty looking bunch of hardware now. So let's get the hardware on and see how this thing looks. So the inside is done. The inside of these drawers are done. Um, everything's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna try and get off the floor and see if my old hips will let me get up without hurting myself. Okay. Oh, this is what it's like from back here. I think that's pretty cool. The reason I did these um, uh, stencils on the door was because I wanted it to look more antique-y. Um, and I didn't want to, I didn't have any stencil that was, I, it was either too big or too French or too something and I didn't want it to be I wanted it to be for either or for men or women and this is the stencil that I used and then I just went down three and I used a very very bit tiny bit of paint on one of these little uh, half inch things and I just very gently dabbed it on so it goes on really nicely so I need to pull the drawer out and I need two screws. Got a bit of wax up here, so I'm going to just blend it in a bit. It, it's good to have the wax up here, actually. Um, let's put one on. I think these are so pretty. The handle bit always goes to the bottom. Some people put their stuff on backwards. Yeah, let's see if we can get this one in. Let's see how that looks. Ooh la la. Ah, I like that. Very pretty. These were kind of that old, ugly, bronzy look from the 70s. There's more wax. So as I open these doors, I'm going to find more wax sticking about. I'm going to have to wipe off. Um. Yeah, these handles were from, there were those brassy ones I showed everybody last night. If you didn't catch the first video, you should try and go back and watch it because there were some interesting bits on there. But I showed you what this original, um, sorry, let's get you down a bit. I showed what this original um, hardware looked like and it was just your typical, you know, 80s, early 90s. Stuff. Wow, these holes are killer hard to find. This hole has it has such a tiny little thing there that it doesn't want to find the hole too easily. These handles, um, I am a handle connoisseur because I'm always looking for new handles and. Um, for different projects and I, I go to many different places looking for handles and boy they can be very very expensive so if you have a piece with some nice ones like this you want to hang on to them and just spray paint them and the spray paint works awesome you just have to do thin coats and not get carried away and make it all runny and goopy because then it doesn't look very good um, but if you can spray them like these ones are beautifully sprayed, um, they just perked right up and they're just gorgeous. So these handles are at least, well, there's my hand and they're longer than me. So they're probably six inches long. They're extra long. Um, so I know they'd be about, like I said, about $25 to $30 each. So that would be... 90 bucks worth of hardware right there so it pays to spray them when you can and um, keep them now look at that so let's go back here a little bit so you can see it's starting to take shape um, I will clean up more wax tomorrow I'll add more in some places and take some off in some places until I get 
just the right effect where I think it looks nice and dirty because the uh, wax is supposed to give the effect of an antique or dust. Here it's a little bit heavy, so I'm going to take some of that off tomorrow too. But I'll just work at it and even it out. I'm going to carry on and do these. You can, if you want to keep watching, that's fine. If not, um, thank you for joining me. But I am going to carry on and get these onto the video. Um, share our videos with your friends and uh, follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, and we also have our picture gallery on Instagram. So if you share with your friends, be sure that everybody's connected with us so that they can watch our videos. And I am going to move you over here so you can actually see me. This was a fun project. Um, I did spend a lot of time on it today. fair amount of prep time, but it's really worth it to do these pieces. I think they're so pretty. I mean, it's just a dramatic transformation. So if you look at our, I'll post pictures in the next couple of days, and then you'll see the before and after. And the next time you go to Restore, and you're looking at stuff at Restore, <clears throat> you can say, you know, I know what that piece could look like. And then you bring it to someone like me or someone in your area that does uh, furniture refinishing or try it yourself. You, if you watch enough of my videos, you should be able to do this yourself. And uh, stencils in the middle kind of look just right. A little bit of wax that needs to be changed for sure. And I will do that tomorrow. And then I'm also going to... Um, do polycrylic on the top so it's a really nice black coat but I'm going to put some um, high gloss I might use a satin finish on the top but otherwise it'll be a high gloss finish on the top so that is it guys and um, thank you for joining me it was a really fun project it takes a little bit of time but they always where I think it will be nice so I hope you learn a lot share um, follow us and we'll see you next time. Bye.